Hello YouTube. With the coronavirus outbreak sweeping the nation, I figure now would be the ideal time for me to do my 2020 gun collection update. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Up on the wall here is the gun I've started all my gun collection videos with. This is the musket. Finally put it up in a case because I figured this is a gun I'm never gonna shoot. I can use it as a wall hanger at least and it looks really, really good up there with that rosewood case on that red background. So moving on. This is the Mosin Nagant M9130 and 7.62x54R. Same configuration as last time. I don't have any plans to do anything to this gun because I think it's perfect the way it is. No real reason to change anything. This is the Ruger American 243 Winchester. Same configuration as last time. Uh, eventually, I would like to upgrade to a nicer scope and shell caddy. But seeing as how I don't shoot my bolt-action rifles as much as I used to, that project has kind of fallen by the wayside. Still, really nice gun to shoot. Down here is my Mossberg Patriot 308 Winchester with the wood stock, uh, fluted bolt and barrel. Absolutely gorgeous gun and a sweet shooter. Eventually, I'm thinking I might just move that uh, Vortex scope onto the Ruger and put a higher powered scope on the Mossberg and then get a nice leather shell caddy and sling for it. But again, like I said, I'm not shooting the bolt actions as often, so that project is gonna have to wait till later. But moving on to the semi-autos, we'll start with the non-AR-15s. This is the Ruger 1022, 22 long rifle, semi-automatic, with the 4x32 scope. Um, this gun is highly customizable, but I actually prefer the basic setup like this. It does everything I need it to do. I don't really have any reason to change anything. Um, down here, uh, one of the comments I got on my last video was that I needed to add more mill serps, and I was thinking that actually sounded like a really good idea. So this is the Norinco SKS. Always wanted an SKS. Figured now it was time to add one to the collection. Uh, this particular model is in 762 by 39 uh, I really like that distressed wood. This gun was actually issued to the Chinese military, so it makes sense that it looks like it. Down here is my Romanian Wasser 10 AK-47 in 7.62x39. Uh, anyone who saw my last couple of videos knows that I did have the Century Arms C-39 V2. But after a while, I started having some reliability issues with it. And watching reviews, I realized that it didn't really have a great reputation. So for my own peace of mind, I ended up selling it for pennies on the dollar and put the money towards a more reliable AK. And I've been really happy with it ever since. Eventually, I might actually change out the wood, put some nicer furniture on it. But right now, I'm absolutely loving it. Down here is my Springfield M1 Grand, same configuration as last time. Uh, about the only thing that I would actually do to this rifle is add a sling to it because I think that uh, modifying an M1 Grand is sacrilegious. Uh, also, this is in 30-06. Beautiful rifle, great gun to have in the collection. Uh, moving on to the AR-15s. Over here is my Wyndham Weaponry WW-15 in 5.56. This is a basic AR, A2 setup, same configuration as last time. This is the Smith & Wesson M&P 15 Sport 2 that I've accessorized. The only difference from the last video is that this one now has the CTR stock. And I took off the angled foregrip in place of a vertical foregrip because I found that I prefer the vertical foregrip on rifles. Uh, I think that they're more fun to shoot, more stable, more comfortable for me to hold. Over here is one of my rifle builds. This is a Brownells upper on a Spikes Tactical lower. Uh, I added the Seekins Precision uh, trigger guard, extended magazine release, it's got the Strike Industries, uh, extended latch, charging handle, all in red, gives that Black Widow look. And I added the Daniel Defense vertical foregrip in place of the Bravo Company hand stop. Uh, this gun's also in 5.56. Five, um, this was my more budget-friendly build, but it's a really sweet shooting rifle. And then the 20-inch ARs. This is my M16A4 clone. Uh, not a perfect clone, but it does the job for me. It's an FN upper on a Palmetto State lower with the Knight's Armament vertical foregrip uh, in 5.56. Five, and these 20-inch ARs have virtually zero recoil. They're a ton of fun to shoot. About the only thing I would do to this is add the Trigicon ACOG, but that being like a near $1,200 optic, I just don't have the cash for that right now. But as funds allow, I plan on upgrading it. And this is the Anderson AM-15 range rifle. Uh, this gun has undergone changes in every single one of my videos. It's actually become kind of a running joke now. Although I think this one's finally uh, set up the way I want it. I added that really nice slim M-lock rail, uh, low profile gas block, and that muzzle brake on the end. So I think this gun's finally set up just the way I want it to be. 
Uh, it's also in 5.56 five, in case I forgot to mention. And then lastly, there is this baby. This is my Alexander Arms upper on my Anderson lower in 6.5 Grendel. Got that Vortex 4 to 16 by 50 scope, Shillin match grade barrel, Wilson Combat single stage trigger, and a Millennium Compensator. Uh, if Hawkeye were to build an AR-15, I feel like he'd build something like this. That 6.5 Grendel is one of the flattest shooting rounds I've ever owned. Expensive, but totally worth the ballistic advantage. And probably my favorite AR that I've ever owned and ever will own. Love this thing. Uh, moving on to the shotguns. This right here is the very first gun I ever owned. The Mossberg 500. Pump action 12 gauge with the 28 inch barrel. And I got the porting. Right there, beautiful bluing, ultra reliable. Never had an issue with that gun. Uh, below that's the Mossberg 500 Tactical, pump action 12 gauge. It's got the extended magazine tube, the heat shield, and the ghost ring sights. I got this one to be uh, my heavy duty home defense gun, loaded it up with some double out buck. Really, really great heavy duty uh, home defense uh, weapon. And then below that is the budget Mossberg. This is the Maverick 88, pump action 12 gauge. Um, this gun, in my opinion, is the best bang for your buck home defense gun you can get. These can be found regularly for right around the $200 price point. They're ultra reliable, made by Mossberg. You really can't do much better than that. With this whole coronavirus thing, if anyone's looking for a good home defense gun that's not going to break the bank, take a serious look at the Maverick 88. And then finally, my grandfather's shotgun, the Browning Lightning Over Under, 12 gauge, the beautiful wood and bluing and engraving, gold trigger, Double barrel. This gun is definitely a safe queen. This gun only comes out for these videos. I really don't take it out and shoot it anymore. Uh, it's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful firearm. So moving on to the re revolvers over here. We've got the Ruger single action Vaquero, 45 Colt. Same setup as last time. Don't plan on changing this one. It's got a hell of a kick and the ammo is really expensive, but it is a really cool gun. So the Ruger single six and 22 long rifle, although I do have an extra cylinder for it that you can swap out and make it a 22 Magnum. But this was my grandfather's gun. So like the shotgun, this one doesn't really come out all that often. It's more sentimental for me, but it does function perfectly. It's a really fun gun to shoot. Uh, below that is the Heritage Rough Rider 22 long rifle. And like the Ruger, it does have an extra cylinder that you can drop in to make it a 22 Magnum. This is actually my girlfriend's gun. Got it to her for Christmas as kind of like a welcome to Texas gift. It's a really, really sweet shooting gun. The only thing I don't like about it is these things come with this really dumb safety right here. So it's a single action revolver with a manual safety, which I thought was really, really dumb. Uh, when you're shooting it, though, you don't really notice. So, you know, for a $100 uh, revolver, it's really, really cool. The only thing that sucks about it, aside from that uh, safety, is the grips are super cheap. Like really, really bad quality. Definitely got to replace those. I cleaned this gun once and you get... Like, it's really marring the finish on there. So, you know, they're really low quality. I definitely got to replace them. But aside from that, it's a really fun gun to shoot, and ammo is dirt cheap. Below that is the Ruger GP100 357 Magnum, double action. I uh, got these really nice rubber grips with the finger grooves. No plans on doing anything with this gun as far as upgrades go. This is just a, a phenomenal gun to shoot. And it'll handle pretty much anything you load into it. Ruger has just got that reputation for utter reliability. And then below that, continuing with the whole Millsurp thing, is the Smith & Wesson Model 10 with the bull barrel and 38 Special double action revolver. Um, the outside looks a little rough. It's got a little pitting, but it's got a lot of history behind it. And mechanically, the gun functions perfectly. Uh, I just thought it would be a really cool addition to the collection. And it's also, coincidentally, my first Smith & Wesson revolver. So I'm moving on to the semi-autos. This is the IWI uh, Jericho 941, 45 ACP with the full metal frame slide. This gun is super heavy. So anyone who's consider considering one of these things as an EDC, you know, you're gonna carry that weight. Uh, down here is the Colt Mark IV Series 80, 45 ACP with the polished slide. That's just a beautiful gun and it's a really sweet shooter. Uh, down here is a newer 1911 of the collection. This is the Springfield 1911. This is not the range officer, but it's a really sweet shooting gun. It's pretty much mil spec. The only thing that's different from the GI models is this one has the three dot sights. But, and then it's got the, that flared 
housing back here. But aside from that, it's pretty similar to what a GI would have carried in World War One, or I'm sorry, World War Two. A really cool looking gun, and I really like that those brown grips with the Parkerized finish. And then below that, anybody who watched my last video knows that I was really, really looking at the H and K forty five tactical. So I saved up all my money and I went out and bought an F and X forty five tactical. You know how did that happen? The um, the H and K was an absolutely gorgeous gun, and I really wanted one until I realized the F and X outperformed it in every possible way. Uh, the F in here holds 15 rounds. The H and K only held 10. Uh, they both had the threaded barrels, so you know, you'd know you be suppressing it down the road. But the F in was the only one that came with suppressor height night sights. Uh, and on top of that, it had the cutout for the RMR right out of the factory. So as much as I really wanted the AK, the F in was just the smarter choice. Uh, I, I've been really happy with my purchase, though. This thing's really solid. It's built like a tank. And later down the road, I do plan on throwing a suppressor on it. And moving on to 9mm, this is my SIG P226 Legion. Um, this is one of the sweetest shooting guns I've ever owned, and anyone who's on the fence about the Legion series, definitely check them out. I absolutely love this gun. Below that is my SIG P229 Legion uh, with the Olight PL Mini. This is my bedside gun, utterly reliable, night sights, gray guns trigger. I would trust this gun with my life through hell and back. Uh, below that is my Beretta. 92 FS. This was actually my favorite pistol to shoot before I got those SIGs. Uh, I've got the Beretta Walnut Grips on there. Um, absolutely love this gun. Don't regret this purchase at all. Really sweet shooting gun. Really easy to take apart. Anyone who's looking for their first full-size handgun, uh, I would highly recommend one of these. And below that is the Beretta 92 FS Inox. Um, like I said last time, I'm in the process of converting this thing into uh, full stainless. Right now, it's still got the, all the black pieces on there, which I really don't like. Um, I've got my plans for this gun. Eventually, it's going to be entirely stainless. I'm going to change those grips out. Um, I got this gun purely for the cosmetics because I already had the other Beretta up there. So aside from the finish on the gun, they're virtually identical, but they're really, really nice shooting weapons. Up here is my H&K P30L in 9mm. Um, this is the gun that Keanu Reeves used in the John Wick 1. Um, and ever since that movie came out, they've been really, really hard to find in 9mm. Um, I've only ever found these things in 40 Smith & Wesson. And if you watched my last video, you know I'm not really a fan of 40. I really wanted the 9, so I just kept looking and looking until I finally found it. And this gun is drop-dead gorgeous, and it's a sweet shooter. It's got phenomenal grips, the blacked-out rear sight, fiber-optic front sight, that's absolutely surgical with this thing. One of the sweetest shooting handguns right out of the box that I own. Below that, the Ruger SR9C. Um, for the price, this gun is loaded with features. You get a really nice trigger. You get an ambidextrous uh, magazine release, front and rear slide serrations. Uh, you got a loaded chamber indicator up top, right up there. Uh, I think this is a really, really good budget-oriented handgun. And I've been a really big fan. The trigger is actually really good for the price, too. Then down here is the Taurus G2C. Um, this is another gun that I bought for my girlfriend, and she absolutely loves it. Um, before this gun, I was never really a fan of Taurus, but I had a buddy who picked one of these up, and he let me shoot it. And it was a really good experience. It was utterly reliable. It was really accurate. It was a really fun gun to shoot. It's a perfect size, too. So I picked this up for my girlfriend for Christmas, and she absolutely loves it. This is um, anyone looking for a 9mm handgun on a budget, I would highly recommend this or the uh, Ruger SR9C over here. Um, it's got these really cool aggressive grip panels on them, and it's a really, really sweet shooting pistol for a really affordable price too. Up here is the Smith & Wesson MMP9. This is the Generation 1 with the Olight PL Valkyrie on it. Um, this gun was the very first handgun I ever owned. And I absolutely love it. The only complaint I have about these guns is the trigger is a little grindy. But aside from that, these are really, really well built, utterly reliable. And this is the gun that really made me fall in love with Smith & Wesson. Uh, below that is my new EDC gun. This is a Smith & Wesson MMP9C. This is the 2.0. This is the 4-inch model. And this is probably one of the best deals I ever picked up. I got this gun on sale for $350. And it came with three magazines, a hard case, and the factory night sights. It's got a really aggressive grip texture, which is really nice at the range. Although when you're carrying it, it does kind of dig into your side a little bit. But that gun is utterly reliable. It is an absolutely gorgeous pistol. Really, really accurate. Absolutely love that gun. 
Below that's my Smith & Wesson M&P9 Shield with my uh, custom upgrades. I've got the Talon grip tape, the Monarch trigger, uh, extended magazine release, and the Ameriglow tritium night sights. And I still maintain this is probably one of the best carry guns. Uh, whether you're a novice or a pro, uh, this is one of the best guns to get you into carrying a pistol. Uh, below that is a Smith & Wesson M&P Bodyguard 380 with the Crimson Trace Laser. And this gun is an absolute pain in the ass to shoot. It's not fun at all, um, but it serves a purpose. It's a very small gun. It's very easy. You can just throw it right in your pocket, and you never know when you're going to need to uh, deep conceal a pistol. So when you have to, got that one in the collection. Up here is the Ruger Mark IV 2245 and 22 long rifle. This is one of my favorite guns to shoot. Ammo is dirt cheap. And because of this little button in the back, it's super easy to take apart and clean. Which these, uh, these guns that have this design have never really been easy to clean. But because of these, they are. Which is why I ended up picking this gun up. And it's, to this day, one of my favorite guns to shoot. So on that note, this is the Browning Buckmark in 22 long rifle. This gun is a really, really comfortable grip. It's got that rubberized grip texture, really nice trigger, really accurate, super fun gun to shoot, just like the uh, Ruger. The only thing is, like I was saying earlier, this gun is a massive pain in the ass to take apart. <laughs> and uh, because of that, this one ends up sitting in the safe more often than the Ruger does. And I'm thinking this gun's probably gonna be for sale pretty soon. But if you don't mind the challenge of taking it apart and putting it back together, this is a really, really sweet shooting pistol. And I would say it's actually probably more comfortable to shoot than the Ruger. Below that is another Milserp. This is my Romanian Tokarev in 7.62x25. Uh, these guns don't look very ergonomic until you actually put it in your hand. It feels really good and it points really well too. And what's interesting about the 7.62x25 is it's actually ballistically similar to the 357 SIG. It can actually defeat level 3 body armor, which you wouldn't think that an old gun like this would be have a lot of practical application, but it really does. And I picked this gun up um, for $200. And even if you don't end up using it for anything practical, it's a really cool piece of uh, firearm history to have in your collection. And last, one of the comments I got on my last video was that I didn't own an AR pistol. So I went ahead and put one together. This is a Spikes Tactical Lower with an Aero Precision Upper in 300 Blackout. I've got the Sig Romeo Micro Red Dot, SBA3 Brace uh, with a Stealth Gray Furniture. Really, really cool gun. I do plan on adding a light to it and uh, suppressing it eventually. Uh, there's one other gun that did not make the video. I had a Smith & Wesson m and 22 compact with the threaded barrel, uh, but I picked it up from the gun uh, gun uh, store, and it had a defect right out of the box, so I had to send it back. But, you know, I figured with this whole coronavirus thing, I'd go ahead and make the video anyway. But I just thought I'd mention it so, you know, you knew it was out there. I do plan on having that for the next video. But there it is, guys. There's the 2020 gun collection video. I do plan on adding more to the collection. So, you know, stay tuned, and thanks for watching.